Professor Mikhail Popescu uh, is an engineer that works with Eduardo and his uh, health management department. He's a specialist in sensor, mobility sensors and will talk ab uh, about how this can be used uh, in the so-called smart cities. So, Mikhail, please. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Luis actually uh, challenged me to, to think about sensors in a smart city con context. I am actually, my research is, uh, is uh, sensors for uh, monitoring, uh, uh, for in-house monitoring older adults. So, uh, here I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, probably brainstorm how, how can uh, and why would public health benefit from using sensors? And, and mainly in my, my area in in-house uh, in sensors. So just you wondering, uh, I'm from University of uh, Missouri in Columbia, well, where Missouri and Columbia is. So uh, they are right in the middle. So Columbia is right in the middle of uh, uh, Missouri St. Louis is to the right, Kansas City is to the left. So, uh, yeah, Florianopolis, I, I wish Missouri was here, but <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so why, uh, why is uh, sensors, why, why do we need sensors? Um, I think one of the ideas that, that we need sensors is, is, uh, is, is, is tied to the uh, economics part and to the prevention part. If you tell somebody you is going to die, it's not going to believe it until you can verify every day, unless he sees a progression every day of that problem. It's like having a car that somebody tells you, oh, don't put oil in. If you don't put oil in the car, the engine is going gonna, is gonna to stall. Your, your, your car is going to die. Well, if somebody would tell you that without you having a gauge saying, oh, my God, my engine is getting hot. So it, it, the guy was right. You, you'd probably not believe it. You say, oh, I, just, I can go without oil. It's more expensive to put oil. So I think that's kind of the, my, my main pitch of the using sensors is that the more we can see our progress and then the, if, if, if a person is rational or not, I think if you see that uh, the immediate effect of your acts and if you can measure them, uh, that that would probably you know make an impact on you and make more rational you know you wouldn't probably smoke because but it's hard to you smoke if you don't see an immediate uh, unless you measure your heart rate or, or you can see something that that is bad for you next day you 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 don't believe it's going you, you're gonna die from it so that that's uh, one of the use of uh, what we use in our research is basically <coughs> chronic disease monitoring. And uh, as, uh, um, it's, it's interesting how we define older adults. So apparently in Brazil, you define <laughs> older adults as 60. We define it as 65. So I'm not sure exactly why is that the difference of five years. But anyhow, we basically the US and Brazil uh, share the, the, same, the same problem. Like there are 50% older adults right now, and they, mo most of them have, uh, Actually, what I've seen in your statistics is like 90% away from my statistics where 50% have a chronic disease. But anyhow, they all, they all have chronic di diseases. And the idea is that if you can monitor them every day, that might actually help uh, into uh, what we say capture early changes uh, in behavior. And actually, you could, you could use in, a, it's, it, it's not only trying to prevent the uh, hospitalization or, or a, very, uh, a, uh, a chronic event, uh, but it's actually to, to enable personalized medicine, since people behave differently and they have different, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's hard to tell what, what they do in house. The doctor prescribes what, what it prescribes for, for, the, for the population, for the entire population, but probably personal behavior might be different. So, the, a person would, would require a different uh, medicine. So the idea is, can we actually use, so that's basically my area of research, the idea is can we use this for the benefit of the community? So how, how can public health and 
can, can public health take, take advantage of this data that, that you actually have on any, of, of, of every person in his house? So I'm going to kind of make an overview of what a smart community is. And, and uh, I, I have the article here that, that I, I extracted this. They talk about smart city, but in, in this case, it's probably more like a smart community. So it's, it's, it's a community that, that using smart technologies, uh, sensors, uh, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, to make uh, decisions like uh, uh, critical infrastructure, uh, uh, services, uh, more, more efficient. So there are various, a city, a community has m many functions. Uh, healthcare is only one of them. So other like city administration, education, uh, uh, real estate, transportation, as, as the previous uh, speaker mentioned, they all can benefit of, from, from uh, smart technologies. But technology is obviously just a part of the, <coughs> of the community and of the problem. So not, not necessarily if you have technology, you, you solve the problem. So it's, it's all, you need to have the, the organization, the policies in place, uh, the infrastructure, uh, 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 the, you know, and the governance. The governance is like, what, you know, what, what do you do with the data? It, it has to be, you get the data, it has to be a re responsible use of the data. So this is actually, you know, the policy level. I, I'm going to say just at a technology level right now, but just to, to put this in, in a perspective. So what do I mean by smart technologies? Well, as I said, <coughs> analytics, infrastructure, you really need to have the network to, to do this. Well, but one of the main components is data. So what, what kind of data can you, can you have? So, uh, or, or can you get? So, there are three, four, four main data sources. One source, uh, the traditional one for for uh, uh, epidemiological studies, was basically uh, the medical records. You go to medical records, see what the people have, and do some some sort of a, uh, analysis. Then, we the the as the technology progressed, we started to have M Health data which mobile data, which is basically the cell phones, they, they, can, they can hold a lot of sensors and a lot of apps they can, that from where you can extract information. Uh, another, so this is my area of research, AHEL, so this is uh, ambient uh, sensors. So these sensors are a little bit better for elderly since they don't have to wear anything and they are basically in the house and then they can capture uh, they, they could capture not, not only behavior, but some, uh, some, some physiology. And then, as, as extended at the city level, is the, the paper calls this uh, C-Health, which is city uh, sensors. So these are, these are uh, basically required by the, by the infrastructure, and they're mostly kind of like environmental and uh, traffic and uh, sensors. The, the question, the, I think the main idea that I'm promoting here is that we, we should actually integrate in, in public health, you should probably integrate all these data sources for, for getting insight into, into behavior and for, for, for policies. Um, so now, just to give some examples of, the, of some, <coughs> I'm not going to go in the, in the uh, e-health, most of most of you probably know medical records. So, but for M Health, these are the the some of the sensors, the accelerometers. The previous speaker actually used accelerometers in in uh, uh, her studies. Gyroscopes. So these are things that are already in in cell phones. Uh, barometers is the the altitude. Uh, GPS. Everybody knows. I mean, they can track where you go. But these are a little bit. The, so camera, microphone, and, and then we start to have a, a lot of new, new sensors, physiological sensors, like, you know, you have the Fitbit has a, a heart rate sensor. You, now, now there are new <coughs> ECG sensors that, electrocardiogram, that, for example, the new uh, uh, iWatch, Apple Watch has. Uh, so, and this is getting a little bit closer to, I mean, to the, to the person. Um, so 
the, 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 the idea is this has already used in apps and, uh, and uh, tracking people. Now the ambient, that's, that's basically what you can use in, in house to monitor uh, uh, somebody, an elderly in, in, in my case. So you have uh, motion sensors that probably that are here in the room, that, that one right there, the passive infrared that basically turns the light on and off. We we'll use it for just monitoring if the person goes by it or not. So if the person is in the uh, uh, living room, how many times it, it went by the sensor or in bathroom, in the bathroom, or the, uh, like that. So pressure sensor, we we'll use it to actually uh, <coughs> measure sleep, and uh, and so this is a bed. We we'll, we'll use it in, in, in bed sensors, uh, and then other sensor like cameras. Uh, and power consumption, temperature uh, settings, uh, water consumption. So I can tell you by watching your water uh, consumption in the apartment, what you're doing. You, you, you wake up, turn the water on, so you have a water consumption, you, you go to your office, you don't consume any water, come back again. So I can tell this kind of, if you are doing your activity as, as planned. If I see one day that, that there is water consumption all over the all day, that means you didn't go to work or, is that, or it's weekend. So um, now at the city level, uh, this is probably, I think this uh, area is, is somewhat uh, emerging right now. Uh, the most things you can do, I mean the usual things you can do, you could count people, see what areas they have uh, high traffic, or you could actually uh, see uh, power in areas, power consumption, water consumption, and then I think the biggest one is, is uh, air quality. Air quality could, could definitely be linked to, to uh, uh, health, you know, uh, asthma uh, uh, incidents and other things. So th these are sensors that are already used in, uh, in um, many cities. So I'm gonna kind of run through a through few cities in the world uh, and probably the, this is gonna uh, be close to the cities that actually have a high walkability and they have a high uh, 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 level of, of uh, good neighborhoods. So uh, this, this city, Mel uh, Melbourne, actually it's, it's interesting that, that they have this data, uh, uh, open data architecture. The data set are, are available. You can go there, extract the, the pedestrian counting data, you can do your, your you know, epidemiological study or whatever. So they also monitor uh, environmental conditions. Uh, and uh, what, what I want to put here that this actually is going to be a, this sensor and all this monitoring is going to be a, a, a great area of, of, uh, of business. So here they, some, somebody estimated that is going to be the, the, the business opportunity and, and I think this is for this city, is, is gonna be $3 billion. So all, all these sensors, all this data, they're gonna uh, create a lot of business uh, opportunities. Now, other cities, uh, Barcelona, uh, they have, they, they put uh, 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 sensors in their street lights. Uh, they can measure uh, air quality and, and uh, uh, traffic. Uh, the, again, this, as you can see, Chicago and, and, and this uh, Santander, uh, and they they actually have a lot of uh, ambient sensors. And uh, the, it's interesting in in Santander, they actually make the data available not only to their citizen but also to the to the tourist. So if if you have something to brag about, if you have good air quality, you better <coughs> advertise it and make people come to your city. And this is like. Again, it's one thing to say, oh, our, data, uh, our air is very clean. It's another thing to actually show people that your, your air is, is very clean. So this is like data-driven decisions that, that, you can, that you can make. So I, I, I was telling you, this is my area of research. We have the, uh, ten nursing home, uh, seven nursing homes instrumented. Uh, so uh, apartments, in the, this is one of the main nursing homes. Uh, so it, again, it's in Columbia, Missouri. So we have, uh, we started to do this monitoring 15 years ago. Uh, now we have 
well, about 50 apartments uh, online. So uh, what do we have there? We monitor uh, uh, the bed, the you know the sleeping habits, uh, and the, a depth camera that we use for for uh, walking speed. Uh, and so so we could how how you actually do the walking speed outside. The, is the walking speed is actually more important inside the house because that tells you how you know something about the health of the person. And then the, the idea that, that we have a bed sensor where we continuously monitor the, the sleep and the heart rate. This is, I mean, you can actually tell that if you have too much wine, you, you don't sleep well. It's not that somebody's gonna tell you that if you have too much wine, then, then you, 10 years from now, you're gonna have a problem somewhere else. You can actually see it right next day that, well, you know, I, I probably shouldn't have that, that much. Or is coffee good for me? Well, for some people, apparently it's not. So you can see from your sleep. And then, you know, usually people are rational and say, well, if I don't sleep well, I probably shouldn't drink coffee. And uh, so this is one of the things you can monitor your, yourself also a little better. In our case here, we, we send them the monitoring data to the nursing personnel and we tell them, look, there's something not right with this person. Can you check to see what's going on? Now, what I say a smart community should do is actually integrate the city sensors, the personal, uh, uh, so obviously a person can have uh, M health, like Fitbit, and they can use it inside or outside. So uh, mobile sensors are actually a bit more versatile than, uh, than ambient sensors. However, in our experience, older adults don't really need, don't really like the, the mobile sensors. So for older adults, if, you, if they have something in their house they, they, they can ignore and they are monitored, they, they like this better. So and obviously the, the medical records. By, making, by, by linking the medical records to, to, the, to the behavior patterns, you can actually tell why, why this person didn't sleep well. So the person probably didn't, you know, didn't do anything different, didn't drink, didn't smoke, but it might have some, some conditions that actually prevented, you know, by, I don't know, some chronic condition that, that so that could have, could have produced a, a, bad, a bad sleep. So then if, 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 if this is monitored at the community level, individually you, you can say, yeah, I think, your, your uh, heart disease is displaying. Let's come, come back to, to us to reevaluate to something. Or your <coughs> blood pre high blood pressure is, you know, is not controlled. Come, come and see and reevaluate. So I think this integrating these data sources is actually the key for, for uh, a, a good community health. Uh, so this is basically what I'm saying. This is a more detailed plan of what we had before. So we have the houses here. We have the ambient sensor in the house. The, mo the mobile sensor, as you can see, they are half inside, half outside. So you, you have data here and data here in, in both parts. So you, it's EHR is actually EMR or EHR, electronic health data or uh, electronic medical records, depending how you want to call it. Uh, this actually ha has to come into this population health. So you could do population health studies, but also you can take care of, of individuals. Uh, um, so you, you need some sort of a, uh, uh, nurses or some, some sort of personnel here that, that would actually take, you know, answer the, the, the alerts or the messages from the individual houses. But also you, in this, in this way, you, you accumulate a lot of data that you can do population health studies. Um, and then obviously the community sensors, which are all those uh, uh, air quality, uh, you, 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 you'll probably figure out that this house stays in a bad quality, uh, air quality area, so they might have some <coughs> asthma or some, and you can probably take some measures for that. So that, that's basically what I'm, what I'm proposing here. And uh, the conclusions are that uh, traditionally we use mostly uh, EMR data, so medical records and, and, and environment, uh, cell phones actually got us a little bit more, uh, and, and mobile devices got a little more data, that, but still the, this is outside the house. Uh, I, make, I make the case, I, I, I hope I make the case that actually uh, inside 
inside uh, sensors, uh, in-house sensor can, can help uh, uh, detect daily behavior and, and, and physiological uh, uh, variables that can be well, used both for both in individual and community health. And uh, I, I think that that could be used for not, not only just to know something, but you can do health interventions and, and you know, public health interventions and, you know, personal, uh, I mean, uh, medical interventions that, that, that would be more, more uh, informed and more useful. So that was my, uh, that concludes my talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. Um, we are a bit ahead of time, so yeah, we can open for I questions. Didn't be, I didn't want to be between the, the lunch and the... <laughs> <laughs> Mikhail, I wanted to comment uh, on the fact that, um, I don't know if you all noticed, but the nursing home, what they call nursing home, there are 48 independent apartments. And then little by little, depends on, on the couple or person living alone, the level of um, acuity of the person demands the level of service that's provided. So the people who are more in need, like IDL, ADL 7, you know, they are very close to the nursing station and they have access to care. But a lot of people live very independently, just in a community, and there is a real community. They're like a secluded community, like a, a neighborhood, 48 apartments, their houses. You know, Americans usually they don't live in apartments. Apartment there is like a, a two-store building, a house that has a two-store. So that's a different type of community. So the sensors are in the room, uh, not on the person, uh, in the other common areas that they share, which is a little different here. So I want Mahayo to comment, and you all to comment. Many of our older people live with the family, you know, second and third generation, and it was healthy too, but it's different, it's a different environment. So what are the barriers or not for putting sensors in this situation. So, so de definitely our sensor, so this, this uh, reflects American realities where the parents do not live with the children. And then it's not that the children push them out, but they say, I, I wanna be alone. I wanna be independent. So the parents, uh, uh, they, so, and also this technology is <coughs> basically designed for people living alone. Right. So, and the, uh, I should have probably said that this is our pre, the our initial study. What we do right now, uh, we actually decrease the this the main population here is let's say 70 and and above. Uh, uh, then uh, the the study we have right now with the main population is, is is around 60. So they are still independent people, but more functional. And then what we do here, I instead of sending the alerts to the clinical personnel, we send the, basically the messages to, to themselves. So we do exactly what I tell you earlier. We, we inform them about their behavior and their sleep patterns and their uh, physiological patterns. And then that, that you, you probably don't realize if you sleep well or not, or the quality of your sleep, the, the quality of your or sleep, so you can ask actually the system, hey, how did I sleep last night? And you say, well, last night you slept but very well, but not as well as the other, like the previous night. Mm -hmm. So we, that's the, the current research right now that we do, which, which is probably more, more uh, universal than. Mihai, thank you for the presentation. I was wondering, wanted to ask you, how do you manage this huge amount of data from all those uh, s uh, sensors and things in the person, things around the house, things on the street? Is there a central with people watching all the time what is happening? And analyzing. How do you manage okay, this? So, uh, I, I think the key. The is other side of the sensors. So the, the, the key, the right. The, I didn't have that that schema here, but the, right here there is, or, or maybe here we we use a lot of uh, artificial intelligence to 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 actually detect that something some something is wrong, right? So uh, and also to to package the data to summarize the data so that. There is something here, and I thought, I, as I said in the previous study, we if we detect something abnormal, if if the if the intelligence 
artificial intelligence algorithm detects something abnormal, we send an alert to the clinical personnel saying, this person didn't sleep well last night, see, see why. Now, uh, what do we do with the data? The, I, this is not a challenge, I mean, right now this is not the challenge. It's, it can be done, yeah, it's somewhere in the cloud, it's a secure cloud, it's, it's managed, it's transmitted secure. Um, the, managing data is not a, a big problem. It's, it's managing actually, the, the big problem actually is taking actions on the data. So even the algorithm, the algorithm is not a problem. The problem is if, you, if I send the alert to the nurse, is the nurse gonna go and look at the person? Or if I tell you if you have sensors in your house and sensors that take some, something, what would you do if, if you know you, you, you didn't sleep well last night? Because Dr. Louise, he is not used to seeing sleep data every night. He said, what, what do you tell me that? I don't know what to do with this. I mean, I, I have an ECG device. I, I send my, my, uh, my uh, doctor, I said, look, look at my ECG. He said, I don't want to see your ECG. Why did you send it to me? Yeah, I can send him five ECGs a day. But so the, this is the problem. What are the, what is gonna happen? And, and, and I think that's the challenge of the community. What do you do, it, like, what actions do you take if you know it? And, and this is what we see right now. D these are the challenges. The, the technical stuff is not, is not a problem. We, we can, it's, it can be done. Okay, I, I, think, I think I sense, I, I feel your pain, okay? <laughs> Mahai is a very humble man, and it, uh, the uh, issue of AI uh, technology, we have lots of people in America, more than anywhere in the world, that understand machine learning, things like that, so he's a fuzzy logic expert. So he can create the algorithm, you know, with other faculty. But here, at Mahayo, we need to find the right people to do that stuff, you know, to create the algorithm. So he, one of his algorithms he developed with the camera, the in-depth camera, he can predict if the person's gonna have a phone in the future, just by their gait, by the way they walk. So there's a lot of sensors, but it's the technology behind the sensor that's very important too, that he didn't show that much. But then the action, he's saying now our, our challenge is not the data. Because we can handle that. The challenge is actually people acting on the data. His doctor doesn't want to see his ECG. He should want to see it. But he's afraid. The patient's having so much power. He's an informed patient, right? The doctor said, I don't want to see it. So I, I, think I, I, I think now I can, I, I think I understand the, the point of your question right now, thinking what studies are you doing? Because you are fighting also with, with data and where you put it for your studies, right? So. The, and and the, my, my, uh, my uh, uh, answer is, it's harder to do la studies like you did, right? So you have people, you follow people for one year, you have to do something for that project, and then that goes away. The next project you do, you have to do it again. When you have a whole cohort, we eventually ha ha basically have a cohort here. So once we set something up, that, that goes, that, that flows. And we have many projects going on but the technical part is there. So this is exactly what you, what the cohort that Dr. Luis has here, because you, 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 you gather the medical data, but what if you get the sensor data too? Yeah. Once you have everything in place, once you have everything in place, you can do multiple studies, you don't even do worry about this. You have, you have Fred worry about this, and then Fred will, will take care of it. Uh, thank you for your lecture, hi. Yeah. And I don't know more how nurses can manage it and the team can manage with the sensors in the carries too. Okay, so, so let's put it in perspective for 100 people that we have in the study right now, 100 houses. They get about, about uh, um, 10, 10 health alerts a day. So that means one in 10 houses has a problem Right, so the the health alerts are not uh, also in our in our in our study in my study right now. The nurse is in the nursing home, so she can walk to the, you know, ten, you know, 20 meters to that person's apartment and check on him. Well, when you do that in the community, that becomes a little bit problematic since you have to go to walk to the apartment building of that person, knock at the door, and see well, you know, what's going on. And we have that kind of nurses too actually in US, 
but not with sensors. But well, where the problem comes actually, we have we send follow followers too. If somebody, if the algorithm thinks that 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 the follow that somebody fell, it's gonna send an alert. Said that person is down. Go get him. Now, it, the problem is the algorithm is not perfect, so we have false alarms. So nurses actually got kind of tired of the false alarms. And they, and that false alarm, that, there aren't that many, but they, the, they don't trust our system anymore. Our in intellig artificial intelligence is not that intelligent. <laughs> what we do, we, we try to compensate. We actually send them an email with a 10 seconds, with a 10 seconds video of that person so they can tell, actually, that they don't have to walk to somebody's apartment. They can tell that if it's a fall or, or it's a cat. With the cat, we don't differentiate, unfortunately. So, but, uh, the, but they lost the, they a little bit lost the, the, the trust. And this is where it kind of got us because they don't pay attention to the other alerts. So this is, again, a, a it's, it's an evolving research. We, we are still trying to, to, to make them believe us. But Thank you, Mikhail, for a nice, nice talk. Thank you all.